Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a really scary galaxy we've discovered somewhere out there. This is probably the most fascinating quasar we've ever found and I'm sure many scientists will be talking about this for many years to come. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So honestly, I have a somewhat unhealthy fascination with quasars. What is a quasar? Well, you've probably already heard about this term before, but essentially, a quasar is essentially a galaxy. It's a galaxy that has a very, very specific center. The center of this galaxy is what's known as active galactic nuclei, where usually the central black hole becomes somewhat active and starts producing a lot of different radiation, and sometimes these quasars explode in power and start emitting so much radiation that it's visible pretty much from anywhere in the universe. Now technically any galaxy can become a quasar, even possibly Milky Way, and at some point our galaxy may have even been a quasar as we've seen from some of the signs like this right here, these so-called Fermi bubbles. But in general quasars are sort of scary, simply because of one major thing, what they actually do to the rest of the galaxy when they acquire this status. Essentially, when a galaxy undergoes certain changes, like for example when a galaxy merges with another and a lot of new material is acquired while at the same time a lot of new stars are being produced and the galaxy turns into a starburst galaxy, in some cases this also leads to a production of a quasar which can also be of different power and obviously different types. Eventually all of this obviously settles and results in something similar to what we have here in the Milky Way the so-called dormant galaxy, but before a dormant galaxy status is achieved, a lot of crazy things happen. And some of these crazy things are, at least from what we've seen from other galaxies, can be absolutely deadly to any life in this particular galaxy. So the new discovery from this particular paper actually has a title that explains everything. We've discovered the most remarkable and the most powerful quasar we've ever seen. Quasar that's so powerful that it sort of blows our minds, but at the same time, Quasar that is possibly a warning to what could one day happen to our own galaxy as well, especially following the event that might start in approximately 4 billion years from now, the merging of two galaxies, the Andromeda and the Milky Way. So essentially what the scientists discovered here is a quasar that we normally refer to as BAL quasar, which stands for Broad Absorption Lines Quasar. The idea here is really simple. When we're looking at these quasars, the BAL quasars, a lot of the light that's coming from them is actually blue shifted, meaning that it's moving really, really fast toward us. And a lot of these absorption lines from different molecules, like for example, metal, magnesium and calcium and so on, appears to move right at us at basically really, really high velocities, extremely, extremely fast. This only means one thing, that the galaxy itself is expelling huge amounts of mass coming toward us, and this mass is moving at very high velocities. And we're not just talking about the actual astrophysical jets that you see right here. In other words, it's not just this, we're not just looking at the jets, we're actually looking at other mass as well and a lot of mass, we're talking about mass of galactic proportions, all of this moving toward us at really high velocities. And in this particular case, in this particular quasar, what we're observing are the winds from the quasar moving at about 38,000 kilometers per second, and there's a lot of mass coming toward us. Over 3,000 masses of the sun worth of mass coming toward us really really fast, at basically over 10% of the speed of light. Which of course implies that what we're looking at is the strongest ever quasar we've ever seen. The amount of mass and the actual speed involved here is absolutely ridiculous. And all of this seems to be produced just by the central black hole in the middle of this particular galaxy that's luckily for us really really far away, over 18 billion light years away from us. If it was any closer, we might actually be in danger. And so imagine it's kind of like having over 3000 different suns flying toward us every year at roughly around 12% the speed of light and all of this happening at all times in every single direction, not just in one direction. And all of this of course produced by the central giant in the middle, the black hole that's roughly around 8.6 billion masses of the sun, which is actually just a little bit um, less than double the size of the famous M87 black hole, 
Yet at the same time, that's over 2000 times more massive than the one in the middle of our own galaxy, Sagittarius A star. So in other words, we're lucky, our galaxy will probably never produce anything as powerful as this. In that sense, um, we're kind of probably safe. If our galaxy possessed something a little bit more massive, or actually dramatically more massive in the middle, we might have been in danger. And right now, the calculations in this paper suggest that this is literally almost at the limit of what a black hole can even produce in terms of total energy and total emissions. It's basically pushing itself to the limits. Which also, of course, implies that the galaxy itself is at those limits as well, and it's probably very likely that no new star is going to be created in this galaxy for a very, very long time, because generally speaking, quasars tend to actually, well, there's no better word for it, they actually tend to kill the galaxy. Most galaxies, after becoming quasars, end up not being able to produce stars for a very, very long time, and become really quiet and very dim and somewhat dark. And obviously we don't really know the future of this particular galaxy, but we know that a lot of the material here will probably end up being thrown out of the galaxy into the rest of the intergalactic space. Most of it probably ended up traveling across the intergalactic space forever, never really becoming anything unfortunately. But right now I think we should feel pretty lucky that none of these objects, none of these really powerful quasars, are anywhere near us. The closest such object, or actually the closest so-called AGN, is the beautiful Centaurus A galaxy, and luckily for us, not only are the jets pointed in a different direction, but it's also not really powerful. As a matter of fact, it seems to be a lot less powerful than the vast majority of AGNs out there, so we're pretty lucky in that sense that nothing dangerous, galactically speaking, exists in the vicinity. It might exist in a few billion years, when galaxies start merging, for now though, we're pretty safe. Now there were a few more discoveries coming from this particular galaxy, and specifically in regards to how much mass is being absorbed by the black hole in order to produce these really strong winds. And the amount of material that falls into the black hole seems to be equivalent to about 176 masses of the sun per year which actually does not seem like a lot, and as a matter of fact, some galaxies do seem to absorb a lot more, but in this case, something is causing this galaxy to create these really powerful winds that we've never seen before. And interestingly, even though we knew about this quasar for many, many years, this is the first time ever that we looked at it in a lot of detail, discovering these absolutely incredible properties we didn't really know about. Which I'm sure will lead scientists to look at a lot of other quasars to try to discover what else we can find there as well. There are a few more discoveries coming from this quasar, and they're actually discussed in the paper in a little bit more detail, like for example, they've discovered that some of the light coming here is slightly reddened, and they do explain this as a kind of an absorption of really fast-moving particles that's coming from the actual galaxy. But all of these discoveries pale in comparison to the sheer power and the strength of these winds coming from the galactic center. But unfortunately, that's kind of all I wanted to mention in this video. So basically, this is a really interesting and kind of scary discovery that reminds us of how insignificant and how tiny we are in comparison to some of these other objects in the rest of the galaxy. Some of these quasars are so powerful that they're basically mind-boggling. And remember, when we just discovered quasars in general, scientists could not even believe that such objects could possibly exist. The power here is just insane. But I'm sure there will be more quasar discoveries and possibly even other galactic discoveries that will be even crazier in the future. Which is why you should subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. You can also support this channel by buying the beautiful, wonderful person t-shirt that you can find in the description as well. On that note, I'll see you tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye bye.